become wealthy or whatever, and then they move into these wealthy neighborhoods because they have the money, but their their neighbors really never accept them because it's like, what are these black people doing here? Which is stupid because it's, you know, America is about so the so-called American dream, which I don't know what the American dream is because it's different for different people. You know, for a poor person, it's different. For a black African-American, it's, it's different. You know, just like a person in the favela, success is a, is a different, it's a different thing, you know? So, whereas for the white person, it tends to be, you get the house, the car, the white picket fence in the suburbs, you get the, the 2.3 kids, the dog, the cat, the, you know, whatever, live in this kind of isolated, secluded community that to me is like communism, because all the houses look the same. You know, and, uh, and that's their idea of the American dream, and it's, uh, to me, that's not what my idea of the American dream is. The American dream for me is that every individual that lives there should have equal opportunity. Just like here in the favela, the, the Brazilian dream should be everybody should have equal opportunity. To do whatever, as long as it's within the law, yeah, yeah, yeah. you want a business, you want to go to a good school, whatever, you should have that opportunity. There's things in life that human beings should be entitled to have. That's good quality education, that's health care, you know, a house, food, and, sh and the clothing. You know, I mean, you don't need uh, designer labels. But, uh, you know, have a house, yeah. decent, decent clothes, yeah. and if you go for a job interview, that, you know, yeah. you can present, you know. Yeah. You know, but, uh, yeah, I mean, this is, uh, this is the interesting thing, that in South America, that the, the poor live on the hills, and the rich live, the rich live down there, but we have this. But uh, I want to talk to you about the history of, uh, I want to talk to you about the history of uh, Hosinia. Okay. Uh, this place was settled in 1929. There were three families that settled the favela. There was a French family who settled up here, Laborio. That's why we have the French name Laborio. Down below, you'll have the Camino de Boyadero and the Via Apia that were settled by Italian, uh, Italian and Portuguese families. Those families settled the hill. They were the first original families that settled Hosinia. They only stayed here a short time. After that, a developer came into the favela and bought up all the land. Okay, now, in the, that was like in the 1930s. Developer came in, bought up all the land. They looked at it, and I don't know why, because the United States people have infrastructure, right? Yeah. But these people bought the land, and then they decided one day just to leave. They just left and abandoned the land. And that's when the people from the favelas, uh, the, the, the original settlers of favelas came uh, the original favela was actually uh, more the Providencia, which is downtown, the first favela. It was started after sla slavery was abolished in 1888 in Brazil. Soon after that, in the northeast of Brazil, we had the War of Canudos. And the War of Canudos was between 1893 and 1897. And those ex-slaves were given the opportunity, there was a, a dispute over this land that these settlers in Canudos the government wanted to get rid of these settlers. There were 30,000 people in this area of Canudos. The government made a proposition to the ex-slaves. If you fight with us, representing Brazil, to get rid of these people, we will give you a house and we'll give you a job. So of course, if you're an ex-slave, you want to have the opportunity to, to have these things. So these ex-slaves fought. And uh, soon after the war was over in 1897, a lot of the people migrated south because there was a lot of hunger and, uh, and uh, drought and, and problems. So people moved south to Curitiba, Rio de Janeiro, and Sao Paulo. And when they came, the government gave them jobs, but uh, they didn't give them houses. And they couldn't afford to pay. So the government, <laughs> the government basically pointed to the hills and said to these people, build your houses there. And that's what the people did. And the first houses were like bahacos or shacks. And the evolution of the favela, people would, didn't want to build a nice place. Because they always had fear, oh, if I build this nice place, the government is going to come in and tear it down. So why invest the time and money into building a nice place to have the government tear it down? So a lot of the original favelas were, were like wooden shacks. Now the evolution of the favelas has changed that what people do is they would have a bahaco, a wood shack, they would buy bricks. Bricks are 80 centavos, but tijolos, yeah, tijolos. So they would stack bricks beside their house and nobody would take anybody's bricks. Yeah. Just, 
You'd stack up enough bricks until you had one side of the house. Then you'd tear down that wooden side and you'd put up the bricks. Then you'd save more bricks, tear down another side until you had a house that looked kind of like this, what you see in front of us. Yeah, so you would see the tijolos, this is kind of a, a cheap version. Then uh, the house next to it, to the right, you see the people have put cement over the tijolos, given it a smooth look. And like this blue house here that was beautiful, that uh, people end up creating their own little designs. The guy that lives in this house, he's from Salvador Bahia, and he's lived here over 50 years. So he, he built this house, and this house now he rents out rooms, he and his family live there. When you walk around the corner, you'll see how big this house is. It's really big. So the first original favela was the uh, Morro de Providencia, which still, still exists today. And the interesting thing about Morro de Providencia, or Providence Hill, is they have a museum there that talks about the history of the development of the favelas. And of course, their favela being the first. But uh, I can't go there because it's... Uh, I can't go there because it's uh, Commander Vermeo territory. It's another drug faction territory. And I don't want to get killed. So uh, I stay in Hosinia, or I only go to hills that have the same uh, drug faction control. Because of the tattoos, you get crazy people from other drug gangs that might yeah. think something and they might want to kill me. So, uh, But someday when they pacify that hill, then I'll go there and see the museum about the history of favelas. This is from the, what you saw at the bottom of the hill, the football field, the swimming pool. The, uh, Skateboard park. And you have the hospital, which we're going to call. You'll see the hospital. There's already a hospital, right? No, no, we had clinics. We now have a hospital, but it's not finished yet. We're going to walk by it. It's around the corner. Here's the curve of the Wesley here. Here's the curve of the Wesley. It's just down around the corner. It's not even two minutes to walk. The curve of the Wesley here. So you'll see the hospital on the right. This used to be where the Bali Bronx were held, but now they've moved. There's a place in the hospital the school, there's a strip where the school uses and they have the body pump there, the curve of the west. And then here, remember that big open pit that I said was near my house? This is 210 apartment buildings that they're going to build here. So, the, you know, the, the, the government is trying to, you know, they have this whole thing, Hasina Bai Muda, Hasina is going to change. You know, so do people, to, do people want it to change? To, yes and no. You know? Uh, they want it to change the way the government wants to change it? Probably not. You know, it, the government always tries to impress what they want to do. But very rarely do they ask the people, the community, what they want. So it's unfortunate that the, you know, the people don't really, you know, the people that were moved out of that here. Be public housing? It's going to be housing for people it's that It's going to turn the crowd. But they, they're going to have to keep putting money into it. To maintain it, otherwise no, no, it's going to just become no, a tenement. No, no, people, people, people here are different. People here, even if you have move into this, we're not destroying it. It's not like the states where you move a bunch of people and they freaking destroy everything. Not here. People take pride in where they live. Where they live, they want a nice place. Like, my house is not the best house, but it's clean. You know, it's clean, it's not dirt everywhere. You know, I keep my place clean. It's a favela, but... People still have pride in where they live. So here's a map. So of course, uh, the Bordeaux here. We were way up here, and now we're here. And all this is happening because of the Olympics. They're trying to clean things. No, up. I think they they started it before. Before, okay. They actually started it before Rio was chosen for the Olympics. Okay. But I think they're, they're investing because they, they see this population of people, 300,000 people here. I mean, I think, I don't know, maybe they feel guilty. But they had this program back in the 90s called the Favela Bajo pro Program. And what they were trying to do is, like, Hosina is still considered a favela, but a lot of, but the government has classified it as a Bajo, or a neighborhood. Right. But, I mean, it's huge. It's a, if it's a neighborhood, it's a huge neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're almost to the bottom of the hill. We've started from the top, like almost the, right. the, the peak, and look how far we've walked. So what they're probably going to do for the Olympics and, and the uh, World Cup 